Yeah. Pofo in the white shorts, McGrath in the green. Pofo having his first fight since uh, October of last year where he challenged Liverpool's Paul Lloyd for the uh, vacant Commonwealth and the British title and put up a really good fight but lost on points. Since then, most of his activity has been on the roads. He's ran in the London Marathon. He ran for his son, Samson. And you can see Samson written on his trunks. His four-year-old son uh, is autistic. And, and Popo raced in the marathon for charity, for his son's education, and raised £20,000. And now has decided to get back in the ring and earn a few more quid. Up against Graham McGrath, a man of no amateur experience, to and pro with uh, Pat Cowdell, former European champion. This should be um, Popo's fight. Oh yes, <coughs> Popo is a great wee workhorse. He's just like a miniature Mike Tyson. You know, he's strong, he's durable, he can bang. He's just a real tough wee guy. Loads of experience, like he has it all, you know. But this is a good, th this is a good hot, tough opponent that I'm expecting. Like this guy's no mug. He's had 96 fights, so therefore he's he's got <laughs> he's got loads of experience now. 96 fights. He's, he's only uh, he's only won 21, lost 70. But it's his ninth fight of the year. His ninth. Yeah, Pope's just weighing things up here. He's he's seeing where the land lies. And he's not getting too excited. He's, he's he's looking for his openings. He's working his way in. He's just not going mad. A good wee oh, beautiful. Two good punches, oh. two rights. The first uh, did a lot of the damage, and the second softened him right up. So a standing eight count for McGrath. That first right hand, as you said, same, just opened him right up. The second right hand just then was the icing on the kick. Stumble there. No real knockdown. He's got to be careful. Those uh, long right hands have a bit of danger to them. I know McGrath's uh, record doesn't doesn't say that uh, doesn't choose that he's a puncher, but I would say he's not a bad puncher. He, he'd be what you would call in the game a hurtful puncher. You would need two or three punch causes to put you down, but he can hurt you really badly. And Pofo from Bethnal Green, from these parts, but now lives in uh, Romford. Oh, it's that just right in the nose there. So, oh, nice. Hit him high up too. Just caught him right, right on the temple. Just watch on the... That was a hurtful port. Oh, very nice. Just up very high. That just disorientates you for seconds. Like you're not badly hurt, but just disorientate it for a few seconds there. And he takes some stopping. 70 fights. Uh, he's lost out of his uh, 96, but only 13 times has he lost by the short route. Well, he's a good durable guy. Like, he, he, he's a good tough test for anybody. And he's on a bit of a roll. Two wins and a draw in his last five fights. So he'll be full of confidence tonight. He'll need to be against Ampopo, who's got uh, a terrific pedigree. British and Commonwealth champion in the early 90s. Nice way and Pupo works his way in with his jab and then he gets his range with it with his left hand then bangs that right hand over. Again uh, off balance, really knocked down there. He just ducks the point it's nice the way he cuts the ring off. You know he, he, he makes he makes work, he makes life e easy for himself. He doesn't run around after his opponent, he takes a couple of steps, bang and cuts this guy off. This is a sign of a of a very experienced professional fighter. Right. 
And Pope has had some great nights. Perhaps his greatest was when he beat Robbie uh, Reagan in September 91 in Cardiff to win the British flyweight title. And lost to Reagan and won it back against James Drummond in December the following year. And held it till he relinquished the title in 96. Nobody going wild uh, in this fight. You know, they're, they're both, they're, they both must have the greatest respect for each other. But uh, normally, and both would be in there all guns blazing uh, and then throwing punches from every angle. So he's very, he's been very quiet. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not his normal self. Like he's just weighing up the situation, obviously. But uh, that was a bit naughty. And, uh, admonished, rightly so, by Dave Paris. Big problem for Ampopo as far as the referee is concerned are that he does right. produce an awful lot of low blows. Ampopo? Yeah, but he, he, throws, he throws quite a few uh, body shots. And I suppose that the law average just says when you throw so many body shots that you're, it's inevitable you're going to throw one or two uh, low. But uh, they're, they're definitely not potential by, uh, by Ampopo because uh, right. he's a very cleanly fighter. Uh, he, he, he wouldn't do a non toward at all. He's just not been terribly, you know, I just can't get over him. Any time I've worked on his fights, he's been all, he's been in there right away, bang, 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 it's been a war. I mean, he's just taking things easy. <laughs> he says, he's not being his normal self. I sometimes wonder at that, you could be totally wrong. You, s you sit back and you think, do you being a fighter yourself at one stage? You just say that, is there a, has he got weight problems? Has he losing his, 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 uh, his uh, hunger for the sport? You know, you just don't know. Those are nice, some nice good body shots he's putting in there. But in general, he's just not, you know, he's just not the same explosive fighter uh, as what I've seen before, you know. There's one of the low blows going in there. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's funny, and I think sometimes fighters think they're doing more than they actually are. When he comes to look at the tape of this and realizes he's, he's not working as hard as he thinks yeah, he is. Yeah, that, that, that's the fighters are their own worst critics, but they threw a low blow there too. But for some of these guys where their waistbands up and around their neck, basically, you know, and the waistbands are so high, that up and, if they're not up and around their neck, they're up and around the belly button. It should be up, it should be on your hips. Because you've got your stomach from, you know, from your hips up, which is a, a legal area you know, punches at, but these are so high. The referees even think you're throwing low blows. You know, and, 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 and it's not justified at all at times. Yeah. You look how high their waistbands are. Yes, both. Yeah, both, both waistbands are quite high and they're quite deep. And it's inevitable when you throw a body shot there, you're going to be hitting the waistband and oof, everybody thinks, oh, that's a low blow there, give him a, a public warning. So the corner were hard at work over the uh, left eye of McGrath, but they haven't been able to stem the blood. It's uh, looking a little nastier now. Four rounds to go. And uh, McGrath's got to start getting some replies in. McGrath's being too negative, and Mpopo, he's throwing a lot of punches, but a lot of them are going amiss. Going round the sides, over the top. You know, and they're in close, they're, they're not doing too much. There's, there seems to be a wee bit of oomph. That's O-O-M-P-E. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, there seems to be a wee bit of oomph missing here from both fighters, especially uh, Mpopo. I mean, it's an easy one to call, but with 70 defeats, it's quick to get negative thoughts, isn't it, for McGrath? Oh, uh, well, you can maybe, you, you can maybe have uh, negative fo thoughts for, for McGrath, but I'm hopeful there, like, uh, it, 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 he's just, he's throwing punches here, here now with, with the weight of his arms, and uh, he's putting no, uh, no part into, in, into them at all. Normally when you throw a punch there, bang. Now, Dave Paris wants a good look at this eye now. Being cleared up and having uh, a closer inspection. It's in a dodgy place. It's on the corner, high up on the corner of the eye. Well, this normally gives boxers then the zest to, to, to go for gold. 
both fighters to go for goal because the guy that's got the cut he thinks is going to be stopped and the guy who delivered the cut he thinks well he's a chance of stopping him so this is this is this is maybe what they need here <laughs> something just to make them go at each other well on top but he's still getting caught by that big right hand yeah you've seen that it came round the side and it came the long way around to him and, and it caught him he obviously didn't see it but uh, it, just, it just <laughs> took the long way around there and, and it did land on target another warning from Popo he's used to those yeah but you can see that they're not low enough to be to, to be dangerous uh, they're maybe in the middle of th see even if they're in the middle of that waistband they're still not low blues in my opinion because that's still uh, a, a legitimate target there, but the waistband so high and the trunks are brought up, pulled up so, so far. That's why. There's a bit, of, a bit more urgency now. They're, they're beginning to, uh, to, to bang the punches in now. Good right, oh, that's a good, nice, nice right hook from Ampoku there. He starts to work, he starts with Miguel, he looks, he, he looks good. Just caught him at the end of the round, and then a naughty one to follow up with, and Dave Paris uh, wagging that finger at him. Not yep. surprising. The second punch was coming out. It's sometimes very hard to stop with, but the punch that actually put him down there. It hit him on the back of the head, which can disorientate you, but uh, it's, it's not as bad as being punched up and around the temple, but I was surprised that he, that he went down with that. Just watch this again. Watch this. This one here, bang. Here it goes. See, see the way it just hit him right in the back of the head there? Stunning. Yeah, well... You sort of see a stars or you see a flash of light for, for, for uh, like a split second and your legs sort of go but it's within seconds within microseconds milliseconds your head's clear again they're not really devastating punches but they put you down and they, and they get you two points the paris has uh, called it off he's had a look and it's the eye that's the problem there you can see it and it is in a dangerous place and the blood was running down into yeah. his eye and uh, and popo has got the stoppage at the end of the third round So Ampofo, after what, 10 months out of the ring, back on uh, the winning route. Good to see that big, beaming smile back on his face. Well, that'll get rid of his ring rust in his room. That's, he needed a workout, you know, and he needed somebody that wasn't too dangerous. He needed somebody that was going to give him a, a slight test, you know, and somebody that was going to bring a wee bit out of him, but not, nothing too, too, dis uh, uh, too, too much. It was an impressive wee win, but... Uh, it's a nasty wee cut that uh, McGrath had there. A nasty wee, we've seen it there close up, it's a nasty wee slip. It's a good workout for him, Pofo, and it'll get him back on, get him back on target. See. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third round, McGrath has retired with a cut. Our winner, Samson Francis and Pofo. <laughs> so, Pofo, the winner again, win number 16.